Welcome to the 2020 Unshackler Awards. I'm Damien Ferry, the Senior Editor of the Unshackled. And this is the fifth year now that we have run these awards. It's very, very important that we get our message across that we disapprove of the nominees that the Australian of the Year Awards carries. Every year you normally get your left-wing Marxist progressives that always get uh, that are always on the wrong side of the culture wars. So we've made sure that we now give our viewers, our readers, a uh, different selection as to what we think should be in place instead. So here we go. Now how this works is I've got 10 awards and we run them uh, from 10th to the 1st and we've got nominees, 10 nominees, and we also do it in the order of last to first in each award. So the first award that we're going to do is the 2020 Fake News of the Year Award. Now, we had uh, previous winners like CNN in 2016 and the ABC three years running in 2017, 18 and 19. So we'll see how they fare. So we had Gizmodo, news.com.au, The New Daily, The New York Times, The Guardian, Nine News, Seven News. And in third place, with 27% of the vote, the ABC. In second place, with 29% of the vote, CNN, the last two that have won consecutively um, throughout the last few years. And um, obviously, amongst the two, really just progressive nonsense. Uh, there's just no, all bias and just no, uh, no facts involved, no, no, just no variety in, in their opinion pieces at all. And in their journalists and um, the, the people that represent the news. And in first place, with a whopping 33% of the vote, the project. And the project definitely are, uh, I guess you would say, worthy of this award. I mean, they're, they're a program actually that have had decline of ratings the last few years and should be axed, but it's definitely not going to happen because, I mean, let's face it, it's a platform that is great at brainwashing normies. I mean, it's just excellent for them to push their views across the elite agendas. And um, no matter how much money they lose, it just doesn't phase them because they've got ulterior mo motives in place that are even more important than money. So there you go. 2020 Fake News of the Year, The Project. Next one is the 2020 International Media Personality of the Year. Previous winners, we've had Milo in 2016 and 17. We've had PJW in 2018. And Tucker Carlson last year in 2019. We'll see how he fares. We've had Michelle Macken, Miranda Devine, Alex Jones, Katie Hopkins, James O'Keefe, Paul Joseph Watson, Andy No. And in third place, with 13% of the vote, Sky News presenter Alan Jones. A legend and um, someone that's been in the game for a long time doesn't shy away from the hard issues and someone that actually reports a lot of things that you will never hear anywhere else on the media. I mean, I heard about the cashless um, push that is going through uh, in politics at the moment and you would never have heard it anywhere else but Alan Jones, so definitely someone worthy of that spot. In second place, with 21% of the vote, Peter Credlin, someone that works alongside him at Sky News and also um, a conservative, someone that's been in um, the biz for a while uh, with Tony Abbott and so forth and um, continues to go down the line of, uh, of news reporting and opinion articles that she does quite regularly. And in first place, once again, 24% Tucker Carlson. Now Tucker Carlson is someone that has really embraced the populist movement uh, in America and represents a with basically a lot of what we're thinking. He's just not your usual neoliberal. Um, he basically goes further um, in his views, uh, controversial, and someone that we really admire. So he's definitely worthy of that award there, Tucker Carlson. So next we have the 2020 Degenerate of the Year Award. Previous winners in 2017, Vanya or Liz Kazon. 2018, Tom Ballard, and 2019, Jessica Yaniv. 
So now we've got uh, our nominees. Jerry Falwell Jr., Peter Nygaard, Eric Joyce, Neil Ferguson, Joseph Rosenbaum, Jackson Williams, Tia Vincent, of course, that uh, raped the 14-year-old boy and got away with it because she's a female. And in third place, 5%, Andrew Gullum. In second place, with 16%, Ghislaine Maxwell, of course, uh, sidekick to Epstein, someone that's uh, been trafficking children, and basically, who else would be put in such a high ranking but her, of course. And in first place, with a whopping 64%, Hunter Biden. I mean, this bloke here, child porn on the laptop. He's been a porn star himself. He's into uh, all sorts of fetishes um, that is widely known now. Um, he's been involved in corrupt business dealings. And I mean, of course, because he's the son of Joe Biden, he thinks he can get away with it all, and largely has for a long time. Um, definitely a degenerate and a scumbag. I mean, how else do you put it, really? It's, um, it's terrible that people like this exist, but nevertheless, in those elite circles, it's quite common. So someone definitely worthy of the award. Now we have the 2020 Culture Warrior of the Year Award. In past winners, we've had Sam Hyde in 2017, we've had Daisy Cousins in 2018, and last year, Jacinta Price in 2019. Our nominees, Kareem Barraclough, Alexandra Marshall, Bernie Finn, Josephine Cashman, Wilson Gavin, Barclay McGain, Claire Chandler, and in third place, with 12% of the vote, Daisy Cousins. And Daisy's a, a regular contributor, someone that you see on the Bolt Report quite regularly. And uh, just, you know, so it's just good to have these, these people that really put their, their, their views, really defend freedom, because it's something these days that, I mean, we're seeing it under attack constantly. So it's definitely good to hear her, her views and um, her articles that she, she writes and her contribution. In second place former director of the ACL, Martin Isles, in 15% of the vote. And Martin, even though he's not at the head of ACL anymore, he's definitely contributing a lot to social media. And you hear a lot about him. Um, I mean, this, this bloke here doesn't, doesn't stop. He just, he, he doesn't hold back. I mean, and this is what you need. Um, too many conservatives these days are just wimps and they basically allow the left to run the agenda and he doesn't do this, I mean, he just goes for it. So someone worthy of second place and with a 41% margin, Mark Latham. And Mark Latham, someone that definitely represents old Labour, I mean, a Labour party that hasn't really existed since 1967 and I mean, even he as leader wasn't that bad compared to what we're currently dealing with. I mean, since embracing the One Nation label, he's really gone hard on the culture wars He's um, been proactive in trying to get rid of the nonsense and the, the political correctness. I mean, someone that is, is just an all-round great politician, a great person, and um, that we should support in New South Wales. So, good on you, Mark Latham. The next award that we've got coming up is the 2020 Triggered Feminist of the Year Award. Nice favourite here. Um, so previous winners, we've had Hillary Clinton in 2016, Sarah Hansen Young in 2017 and 18, and Greta Thunberg last year in 2019. So now we've got nominees, Louise Milligan, Vanessa Van Badham, Victoria Rowlandson, Alisa Milano, the abortion queen herself, Sarah Hansen Young, Magda Zubansky, Jane Caro, and in third place, at 16%, Meghan Markle, and of course Meghan Markle, I mean, she basically has, has controlled things ever since entering the royal family and definitely controls her husband, uh, whips him around, and I mean, she's definitely worthy of the award. Obviously, she's behind every sort of um, movement that circulates Hollywood. I mean, that's where she's from, so she embraces every progressive cause. And second place... None other, with 17%, Jacinta Ardern, and another one, of course, that really, I mean, how irritating really it is to hear her speaking on, on TV all the time. I mean, just non-stop nonsense. I mean, she pushes abortion um, up to life, uh, or up to nine months um, gestation. 
she she basically um, attacks anything to do with um, whiteness, if you want to call it that. I mean, the culture wars. She's just, you know, nuts, absolutely nuts. I mean, she's she's someone that um, definitely deserves to be on there. That's for sure. First place, twenty four percent, Clementine Ford, and I mean. When she's not bragging about wanting to kill all men on, on social media. Um, she's trying to train her, her son to be a beta male. Um, her, ba her kid's son, baby. And um, she's got a cuck husband as well. I mean, why wouldn't she as a feminist, right? I mean, that's what they're definitely after. Someone um, that's just going to follow their instructions and do as they're told. Um, I mean, Clementine Ford has actually came second and third uh, in consecutively um, over the last few years. So finally she gets to win this award outright. Uh, so now we've got the 2020 Cis White Male of the Year Award. Previous winners, Cor Corey Bernardi, Tommy Robinson, and Tony Abbott. Now, um, the Cis White Male of the Year Award, uh, an award designed for toughness and people that, you know, just don't hold back on their views and basically are outspoken. So we've got people like Peter Hitchens, Roger Stone, Piers Corbin, Lynn Wood, Rudy Giuliani, of course, George Christensen, Sam Newman. And with uh, third place, 12% goes to Malcolm Roberts. Malcolm Roberts is a great politician, one of the few good ones, actually, and someone that questions the nonsense of climate change. He's um, actually provided scientific facts, even though the mainstream media refuse to accept it. He um, continually uh, is on the culture wars and, and talks about political correctness and whatever's damaging Western civilization. The Greens, of course, I mean, he definitely has a lot of feuds with them uh, throughout Parliament House. So um, he's definitely worthy of that award and just a great, a great person all up. In second place with 33%, Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse, out of self-defense, um, ended up doing a bit of community service and ended up um, killing uh, a pedophile, uh, so definitely no loss there. Some far left uh, extremists, or terrorists, if you want to call them that. Um, I mean, and this was out of self defense. Of course, the media blew it up and made it look like he was at fault, but uh, this is how it is, you know. I mean, people can only be pushed so far, and at the end of the day, if you're being attacked, you just got to take the precautions necessary and respond, and he did. Uh, so someone that's a patriot, someone that's uh, obviously in the media being attacked quite a fair bit, but I mean, it was out of self-defense and at the end of the day, at least you're able to defend yourself in America, unlike here in Australia. So um, he's lucky he wasn't over here, that's for sure. Um, now we have a first place here, 34%, it goes to Craig Kelly and Craig Kelly's great. I mean, out of all the politicians there, he's one of the greatest. I mean, he's really embraced this truth and movement, if you want to call it that, that um, really goes against the, um, the draconian laws, the lockdowns of coronavirus. I mean, he states scientific fact about how the vaccines have issues, that they're not designed well, and that there are other drugs available that do the job in helping against COVID, but nobody wants to listen. Um, he also is... Um, someone that also talks about culture wars. He's someone that goes against the climate change rhetoric. I mean, they're, they're, they're very important issues. So it's really good that he's been able to be outspoken on those issues on social media. Um, and I mean, there's been many people on the left, uh, Christina Keneally and so forth, that have actually um, come out and said that he should be shut down on, on social media. So, I mean... Normally that means that you're doing a good job and that you're saying something right when people are calling for your removal. So Craig Kelly, definitely worthy of that award. So the next award I've got goes to, let's have a look. It's the 2020 International Cuck of the Year Award. Now, Justin Trudeau won this three years in a row from 2016 to 2018. And we had also Richard Di Natale um, win it last year. 2019. So who do we got this year? We've got Peter Hellier, we've got Anthony Albanese, Michael Rowland, Peter Van Onselen, Matt Keane, Chris Cuomo, Justin Trudeau, fourth place. In third place with 12%, Peter Fitzsimons, the, the bandana troll. I mean, this bloke here 
constant, constantly. I mean, his articles are terrible. Um, usually on culture war issues. Um, he's a writer, of course, as well. But um, just an absolute troll, to be honest. Someone that uh, really um, should be ignored. I mean, really, his, his views are just crazy. Um, with second place, and rightfully so, Joe Biden. I mean, 25%. Um, what can we say? I mean, Joe Biden sniffs children, eh? I mean, the video footage is there. He's a creep. Um, there's no doubt about it. And the left to defend those type of actions is insane. And um, they really need a reality check. I mean, this is what happens with party loyalism, is that people are so in, so uh, connected to a candidate or a party that no matter what they do, they can't do any wrong. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. So um, just Joe Biden there, um, he's already done so much damage. I mean, got rid of female sports, transgenderism enacted. I mean, starting the mass immigration again, starting to get into wars again. Um, it's, a, it's just a nightmare that, that he is in power right now. Um, the person that came first with 38% of the vote, Prince Harry. And I mean, he's someone that's scored quite highly over the years. And he's definitely worthy of this award because he is someone that gets whipped by his wife. I mean, quite regularly. I mean, you see it. It's controlled. And somebody that, um, I mean, he's left his family to go elsewhere or for his wife. And I mean, he supports every globalist view out there. I mean, he's a typical celebrity type figure. Just whatever seems to be deemed the popular the popular sort of way, he's just on it. You know, I mean, of course he would be, right? Um, next is the 2020 International Unshackler of the Year. So previous winners, we've had Donald Trump, 2016, 17 and 19, Fraser Rainey in 2018. So this year we've got Christy Noem, we've got Matteo Salvini, Narendra Modi, Anders Tegnell, Ron DeSantis, Nigel Farage, Jair Bolsonaro, and in third place, Australia's own Pauline Hanson. I mean, what can you say? I mean, she might not be the best orator, but she's got the name, and she's someone that's been in public life for a long time. I mean, you've got people generations now that know her, and she's um, always stood for the same thing. I mean, One Nation Party are one of the few parties that actually talk about the UN 2030 agenda. I mean, they talk about all this nonsense that nobody else touches. Um, immigration, of course. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a party that really people need to look into. I mean, even when they're not 100% legit uh, in what they... I mean, they're not... I mean, you, you can always be... When it comes to parties, you could always say, well, you know, I don't 100% agree with them, but they're still quite when it comes to the selection of parties that are available, they're still right up there. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's better than what you've got now, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to continue to support the two-party system. It's just insane and it's led us nowhere, that's for sure. Uh, the second place goes to Viktor Orban with 8% nationalist in Hungary. He's done a lot of great family uh, policies to try and boost the, the rate of children, uh, childbirths, of course, in his country and a great conservative leader. And first place with a whopping 69%, Donald Trump. I mean, someone that's sacrificed his career and, and his job just to speak the truth. I mean, this guy here came out early, said that masks are rubbish, lockdowns are rubbish and kill jobs, they kill the economy. Um, and obviously the media went nuts on him and, and that, that's why, in, in a lot of ways, he, he didn't perform as well as he could. And I mean, let's face it, he still ended up getting more votes than any other Republican leader. And there definitely was fishy business going on when it came to um, the election. Definitely, 100%. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's a farce. But anyway, at the end of the day, he was someone that started, in many ways, this modern nationalist populist movement. And we are grateful for that. I think, I think it's really important. So now we've got another very important award, and this is the 2020 Australian Unshackler of the Year Award, a new award um, that's come into place, and one that really um, it talks about or describes people that are activists, that are um, grassroots uh, patriots, 
uh, truthers, people that are going out there and exposing the filth um, and the nonsense that there is in the mainstream. I mean, they just go all out. So let, let's go through these nominees here. So we've got James Bartolo, Dave Anelio, Thanos Panayidis, Rafael Fernandez, Nick Patterson, Anthony Kalouf, Max Egan, and in third place with 18%, Ricardo Bosi. And Ricardo Bosi has been around for quite a while now. He's um, gone on um, Patriot events, in marches. He is someone that um, runs the Australia One Party, and a lot of people tout him as the next Donald Trump. Uh, I mean, he, his views are, are, are fairly spot on. I mean, there's very, very little that you could really disagree with when it comes to Ricardo, and someone that we need to get behind. Um, whenever, whenever he runs, wherever he runs, I mean, he's, he's great. So I, I really support, and, and it's great that he got a third place um, standing here. Second place, Pete Evans in 23%, and Pete Evans is great. I mean, another person that you might not agree with everything that he believes in, but you, it's never going to be the case. I mean, you're never going to have that when it comes to uh, people in public or, or, or politicians or anyone. But he's really been outspoken on... Um, vaccines, on uh, masks, on this coronavirus. He's really gone out there and he's sacrificed his career too. I mean, he was due to go on a TV show and he was axed. He's been axed um, from publishers, for instance. So, I mean, for someone to go out there and do that and really, I mean, just because they care and they want the truth um, out there for us to know, I mean, they're really... You need to show them the utmost respect. In first place, we've got, with 29%, Eve Black Limberio. And, I mean, Eve Black here is well, well known, of course, because um, she uh, passed a checkpoint on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. And um, a cop basically asked her all these questions. And she says, well, due to the legislation in place, I don't have to tell you that. Um, under the Privacy Act and so forth. And eventually the cop let her go and she won that, uh, that battle there that was um, raging. And I mean, people have to stand up to these authorities when they're in the wrong. I mean, an abuse of power happens too often and there are laws in place to protect our rights and people just don't know. And the people in power um, basically want us to not know these things so then they can take advantage of us. Uh, someone that is obviously um, very against the, the coronavirus rhetoric, um, vaccines, masks, and, and so forth. So very worthy of the win, and um, someone we'll hear more from, I'm, I'm definitely sure about that. And our last award is the 2020 Australian Regressive of the Year Award. And, I mean, this basically epitomises the type of person that would win the Australian of the Year Award. And we've called it the Australian Regressive, so this is how we've basically done it. Uh, past winners, 2016, Waleed Ali, 2017 and 18, Dan Andrews, and 2019, Tom Tanuki. So let's go through the uh, nominees now. Padraig, Paddy Gibson, Mike Carlton, Paul Barry, Malcolm Turnbull, Anastasia Palaszczuk, Christina Keneally, the troll, social media troll, Kevin Rudd, of course. Um, in third place, with 11%, Lydia Thorpe, and Lydia Thorpe, is, I mean, oh, just a, just a, such a, oh, what, do, what, do you, what, do you even, what word do you even describe on her? I mean, she, she's someone that um, is pretty savage, has come into politics and basically changed the date, progressive agendas. Um, I mean, she's, if you look at her, I mean, she says she's Aboriginal. I mean, you, you could tell that the Aboriginal um, DNA in her is very little, but... Ignore that, of course, and, you know, whatever 90% white that she is, completely, you know, who cares about that, right? Just focus on the minute aboriginality of DNA that she has and focus on that. And, I mean, that, ladies and gentlemen, means when it comes to privilege, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, people claim where the privilege is, isn't it? So they can get the benefits out of it. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, someone definitely deserving on a top place there and ever since entering parliament, I mean, oh, yeah. it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a terrible sight, that's for sure. Um, in second place, Waleed Ali with 12% of the vote, someone that has won it, uh, before 
and always stand it high. Someone that people have basically learned to dislike <laughs> um, and continues to spread uh, lies on the, on the project, of course. 49% whopping Daniel Andrews. And I mean, who else is deserving of this award apart from him? I mean, look at the damage he's done. Um, he, um, apart from his safe schools policies, his LGBT views, of course, um, abortion views, euthanasia views. Uh, I mean, the, the, the old aspect of, I mean, it, it's basically no wonder that people call him uh, a dictator of the uh, Communist Republic of uh, Melbourne or Victoria even, because he's that bad. I mean, um, he was forcing masks early on. And I mean, even outdoors, outdoors. It's just absolutely nuts. I mean, curfews. I mean, this, this is something that states, re I mean, no other state really did this apart from a brief moment of time in, in Queensland, which was didn't last long. But I mean, he was enacting these, these rules in place for a long, long time. And people being from there, of course, very far left sort of views, and they just worship him. So, I mean, a lot of people were going with him and thinking that he was a saviour to them for basically restricting all this, uh, restricting their, their, their freedoms and, and taking them away. And, I mean, what, what else can you say? I mean, Dan Andrews is definitely one of the worst people in this country right now. And there's no... I mean, he was having a, a great time, basically living out his dystopian dream of how he would run a, a place. And, I mean, that's no way that you'd want to live in such a such a society as that. So um, that is uh, concluding all of the uh, the awards now. Uh, we've had a pretty rough 2020, of course. We've had fires. We've had a virus go through. Um, there's been a lot of uh, changes and new normals that they call it in place. But um, this isn't something that we should uh, get used to. We should fight it. We should definitely fight it. And um, I mean, what, what what can you say? I mean, it, it's the the when it comes to the disease. I mean, the like they say, the, the the cure is a lot worse than the disease itself, isn't it? It's that evidence. So I want to thank everybody um, for tuning in and listening to the awards this year. Um, as we conclude, uh, continue to go on the, the Unshackled website and, um, yeah, you know, just, just read our articles that we're constantly putting up. Um, I've put election ones up very recently, so tune into them. Um, we're going to be doing this every year and this is the fifth time now that we've done it. So, um, yeah, just thank you everybody. Um... And I just really appreciate it. Honestly appreciate it. Um, we're going to be tuning into the Australia Day nonsense on the news tonight. Of course. And, um, yeah. I mean, we can just turn our TVs off and tune out of it. I mean, what else do you do? So thank you so much. And we'll see you again next year.